Hello and welcome to GFW Radio. It is August 14, 2007. I am Jeff Green, the editor-in-chief of Games Widows Magazine. And gosh, it feels like it's been a long time since we've done this. Because it, it has, has been a long time. Oh, yeah. That's why it feels that way. <laughs> uh, I'm here with, we're minus uh, a Sean Elliott today, but we have three other editors. And they are... Ryan Scott. Darren Gladstone. And Sean Malloy. So what, what are we going to do without Sean? Somebody else has to tell griefing stories today. More griefing or dick and fart jokes or some kind uh, of random scat references. Fears of the web. Rap. We're actually going to talk about PC games today, I guess. I guess we'll have to. Uh, I, I had one griefing, little griefing story in my head because it happened just about an hour ago before we came on or two hours ago. <laughs> so I wanted to share this with you. And Do tell. Let you guys know if, if it ever happened to you in WoW or any other game. So I was fishing. Because fishing is something you can do when you're actually, like, trying to do something else, like work or talk on the phone. So I could sit there and just <laughs> hit, click the fishing thing. And um, so it casts a line in the in the water. And then some doofus frickin' Torin ass monkey <laughs> gets in the water where I'm fishing and, like, sticks his body, like, right where the on fishing line is. So then, you know, what that does is it, it you know negates my ability to be able to click on the the bobber to get the fish and then i would move like i thought i thought it was a coincidence like this dude's just in the water so i moved the fishing line and then he swims over and moves so he's under the line again <laughs> so i can't fish griefing like, fishing what the fuck okay who's, i like, can't even I fish know. without being griefed yeah. what is that let's call the guy out who is it i don't know if it's worse that you were actually fishing <laughs> or it's worse that he was griefing your fishing that's sad griefing fishing yeah <laughs> He has nothing better to do. Exactly. Than that. Like, so you do you every- really not have anything better to do with your time in the middle of the day on a Monday? Really? I mean, as, well, same can be said for you as you're sitting there fishing while you're. Yeah, well, I guess that's why he was griefing me. <laughs> he was like. Well, that's a, that message. actually is my problem with World of Warcraft fishing in general is the fact you have to click on it because if you do want, it's like it should be something where you can just like watch TV and idly do that. Yeah. The background, but you can't because you have to watch your screen precisely for the moment that bobber hits. It really is the it's worst annoying. thing in WoW. Ever, I think. Are why are it's the worst doing play it? mechanic. <laughs> is there anything that can automate it? Well, it, yeah, they need a fish bot. That's the thing. All you're doing is watching. <laughs> you click on the, you, you throw your line in the water, and then you get the progress bar, you know, going in reverse from right to left. And sometime during the course of that progress bar, you'll see a little, you may or may not see a little splash in the water. And, then you and at that then precise you moment, you have to click it, and maybe you'll get a fish or not. That was their solution to fish bots. Right, but you have to click on the thing. Right, if you even turn away, if you turn away from a sec for a second, you might miss the splash, and then you have to start over again. So you actually have to watch the fucking progress bar. So why it's were you fishing? Stupid- well, that's another. <laughs> <laughs> that's, uh, exactly. Is fishing well, very, very it's, it's helpful. It's helpful for. Like, yeah, you're selling your stuff. I mean, no, it's helpful no, for actually, like making food for like raids and stuff. That's what I use it for. But. It, well, it's a stupid reason. Okay, for <laughs> one, for one, I. I was trying to do, like, you know, low-rent work at my desk, so I couldn't really play. Couldn't, like, you know, play, a, uh, do a quest or whatever. Nor could you do your work, apparently. I, <laughs> I couldn't do my work either because I had to watch the progress bar. I might as well just have been in a, in a raid. Um, but uh, but also there's a there's a quest in uh, Terracar Forest that requires fishing. Mm-hmm. Like, you have to get all these fish. I have a feeling you could probably kill the mobs around there and get the fish, too. But I wanted to get them out of the lake because I'm stupid that way. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, the moral of the story, uh, there is no moral. I got griefed yeah, while grief fishing. fishing. And, I th- and I thought you were going to talk about uh, griefing during lunch. Oh, that person. <laughs> Never oh, been being griefed by the lady. <laughs> lot, real life lady who, yeah. <laughs> Real life griefing. Yeah. She was awesome. Yeah, we got uh, those listening to know if we sound a little traumatized today. <laughs> Because <laughs> the, the four of us here left a burrito place in San Francisco and, and were mowed down <laughs> by some aggro, I don't know, 50-year-old woman? or I don't know what her deal was. She just blew past she, us. I don't she, know. She, well, she, she put elbowed she, Jeff out of the way and, like, she totally, staggered. She'd be like a linebacker. I don't know what Yeah, she, like, pushed me out of the way. I just loved her response after Jeff says, excuse me, and she goes, yeah, excuse you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like, uh, hey, I'm walking here. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a weird moment. How dare you get in her way? Yeah, that was odd. <laughs> Do we have that little authority? We're getting pushed around by fifty-year-old women. She's probably a listener. Yeah. Hey, well, fuck you if you're listening. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, lady. <laughs> Uh, you, think you're okay. t- you think you're tough on the street, but here in this podcast, yeah, here in the podcast, when you're way down the street <laughs> from me, 
<laughs> I'll kick your ass. We're locking our little studio. <laughs> Uh, security okay, door. so before we came on, we were all talking about what what we were excited for, which is what everybody's excited for. So we can't really talk about it yet because we haven't played it yet. But Bioshock. Yay! Yay. I'll be playing it tonight, downloading it off. Uh, I'll be downloading that demo. That was one slow download. Yeah. Well, they sprung it on everyone last night, and I think it was a big surprise. So everyone just went, oh, my God. Ah, I gotta go right. Ahead. But um, you would think Sunday in the middle of the night, you'd be clear. I guess I guess not. Yeah, well, that's a good sign for that game. That's I think a great I think sign initially, like, what nine years ago now, when Bioshock was still was first in its infancy. <laughs> yeah, everyone's like, oh, I bet that game gets like critically praised, but no one buys it. There is a uh, a, a story up on Kotaku today about how uh, that's an interview with Ken Levine. Actually, I think it was linked from Kotaku. Um, so sorry if I'm not getting the credit there right, but um, about how Ken Levine had to shop this thing around for forever mm-hmm. to get a publisher. Well, I remember Nobody the, wanted it. Well, I remember what happened back in the day was they actually fished that the, the initial story that went up on, I think it was GameSpot, was basically a, a last effort to try to get someone like interested in getting this game. Mm-hmm. So when they ran that preview and they saw so many, how many hits were up, people mm-hmm. like were just all over the net getting crazy about it. Uh-huh. Publishers started stepping up all of a sudden. What actually happened here that made it get so, like, become the it game? Because really, it wasn't even that long ago. A year when there were still previews going on, it wasn't quite all that yet in gamers' minds. Um, well, I think as people saw more and more of the game, and because tr- they, they held back so much for so long, you never really yeah. got a good vibe for what the game was about. Yeah. Well, now that's not the case for well, sure. Well, yeah. I'm I'm actually, actually, now, now it's everywhere. Overexposure. Oh, I, I've like, been stop. Yeah, I've actually. I mean, the biggest. I stopped reading. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Seriously, the, the biggest yeah. the biggest compliment I could pay to any game is that I don't read the previews anymore. And like, Sean, I'm sorry. You're, I, I know your story was awesome, but there were so many spoilers. <laughs> it really was awesome. I, I just... <laughs> <laughs> thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you for acknowledging but, that. <laughs> <laughs> but I so did not want to read it because I didn't want to spoil the experience. Yeah. And it, it's gotten to the point, I warned Amy that I'm going to be emotionally unavailable when this game comes out next week. I yeah. Just, we, we got a letter um, saying someone complaining about that preview because it was too spoilery. And it was like oh, yeah. the first hour of the game. Right, like I spoiled the first second, and he was like, "Oh, you should have put a spoiler <laughs> warning." <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I think the demo, if you if you haven't played it and you have Xbox Live, is the first hour too. So you may want to watch it if you don't want the spoiler there. Tom Chick was up on on his website quarter to three, and he was saying, "Do not play the demo. Don't play it. Just buy the game." Yeah, I think if you I think if you know you're getting it tongue in cheek, but he also but he said he sort of meant it. Yeah. 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 Well, actually, it, I guess if you play the first hour and you see things you do, di- you want to do differently when the final game comes out, that's probably a good start, a, a good mm-hmm. thing. So let me ask you guys a, a question and answer honestly, because we all have uh, PCs and Xboxes. You have one now, don't you, Ryan? Yeah. Uh, are you guys going to play on the PC or the Xbox? Neither. What? You're not going to play. Oh, you're not going to play it. It's a first-person shooter. Oh, oh get over God. it, man! You're, you're like triple fired. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it's like we're going to we fire all you. fire you. We're going to fire you, hire you, and then refire you just, <laughs> just to make sure you get the message. Holy oh. cow, dude! Oh. Oh. I don't know what oh. to say to you. Oh, oh, oh Ryan! It, I, I, have a, I have a hard time with first-person games. You Is mean it, playing them or the motion do thing? Do you make you nauseous? Do you get, yeah, do you get nauseous of it? Like I. That'd be fair. I can't deal with like the camera. Hmm. I, I I can't. Hmm. Third operate person? It fast can enough. you deal with? You could do yeah. a third person. Yeah, I mean, person? I can I can That's see all around me with third person. Do you have trouble it's walking? <laughs> yeah. Actually, yeah. I mean, like, I like real life. No, in real life. Like, like, do you have a third person camera for real life? <laughs> <laughs> Here I am walking down the no, street. I, I get that. Well, I, I'm I, not I, walking I, for real. Like, no, walking <laughs> in the game. No chewing gum. You know. I understand. I mean, like. Really whenever though. I whenever I would try to play a, a game in deathmatch or something, and mm-hmm. somebody you know, you have people like Sean Elliott who are jumping all over the place like maniacs, you know, like. <laughs> well, that's and, what the console version like, is for. I'm like trying to turn around, and by the time I can turn around to see like what's seeing me from behind, I'm already dead. I get it. You know, I actually get that with console shooters. In console shooters, I feel like you do. When I'm playing Halo or whatever, I don't have that mastered at all. Like, the, I, the strafing. I can't stand a lack of. So can you not vision. circle strafe? Can I? Can we ask this in public? Can you circle strafe? <laughs> <laughs> in, That's a very, a very private question. question. <laughs> I don't know. He doesn't even know that. No, that probably means no. Wow. It's been so we need long. an aptitude it's, test it's, it's next been... editor we hire. Have you tried <laughs> playing <laughs> console first-person shooters since you've like decided you can't play PC first-person shooters? Is it a matter or? of the speed? Because like I know it's like like you're console saying with... console ones are harder for me yeah. than PC. Hmm. Hmm. I tried like Halo and Halo. They're supposed two, to be like right? dumber for you. Now, one of these two guys said uh, a minute ago 
So that's what the 360 version is for, right? That would be me. Th you said that. Because can't you, in, in Bioshock on the on the 360, do you play it behind over the shoulder? Oh, no, 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 no. It's just, you know, it's got... You just being well, there's no one playing beside you, for one thing. This is a oh, you just game. meant... Plus, I it's see. like, it, Duh. it's got okay. aim assist and all that. Never stuff. mind. Right. It's made a bit easier, so, like, the precision isn't that big, big of a deal. I mean, and, you know, not necessarily in Bioshock's case, where it's, like, well, aiming, well, aiming, aiming for, for you, but it. it does aim yeah. for you a bit. Well, I guess, you know, we don't have to shame you in the play it. Yes, we do. Oh. I mean, you know, like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm like a diehard Metroid fan, and I couldn't mm -hmm. even get through Metroid Prime all the way. Well, well, you okay. must have okay. been tortured. Okay. So. You must have been tortured. Okay. Really well, that's, that's kind of fair, I guess. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going to play the PC one. I'm going to do the PC one for yeah. sure. Only, I'm mainly because of the hotkey. Because when I was playing, yeah. um, it, it just there's so much switching between plasmids and stuff that it just the hotkeys you can just do it much faster at least i presume i can i'm a little concerned about my machine i think mm -hmm. as long as it, my machine's good enough i will play it on the pc and that's 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 the trick right now with a lot of games too is yeah. yeah we're kind of in that in between phase where people are like waiting to buy that new pc that's yep. me me too mm -hmm. actually i'm having major tech problems with the existing pc at home so it might be time real soon here well good luck playing stranglehold while we're while we're at it Really? Oh yeah, that's right. That has that super high requirement because of all that freaking particle shit. Is that right? It, who knows it, what what is it? it requires a dual core. It, it requires dual core. That's so that you can watch like fruit being blown up in eight million. <laughs> it's pieces. the doves. doves so you see, you see, it's the dove card. You actually have one. <laughs> yeah, you need one graphics card just to have all the doves that come out. <laughs> one processor just for dove. <laughs> I can't. I can't tell with that game. Is that going to be good or not? I, I well, can't guy, tell. The guys on the console side have been really digging it. I haven't seen yeah, it lately, but yeah, what did they know? Well, it's basically Max. It's Max Payne, but with, right? I mean, so that's what. Yeah, I was on. Uh, I was a guest on one of them other uh, podcasts that we have here, and uh, <laughs> that's what they were. Uh, that's what they were all saying. The the way they were describing the gameplay, I was just like, "Isn't this Max Payne?" Yeah. I mean, that's with what more Max like Payne, environmental Max Payne was interaction. A rip off of hardball in the first place. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. So. so it's come full circle. So maybe we need to have someone come down from that from that show, have our be our fifth chair. We could have a competition for that. <laughs> and, and we could argue about yeah. I mean I, I didn't get that into Max Payne either. So it's just not my kind of game. Yeah. But I, it looks cool for that kind of game. I yeah. think. I mean it looks kinda of interesting. I'm 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 put, I'm gonna definitely check it out for sure. I think the like I was just thinking about it last week when the news came out about the specs. I was a little I remember we were, we were talking about it at first. Yeah. I, I was I was a little like I wouldn't say like dismissive about the specs. Because my, my, my yeah, you kind of were. Yeah, I was. I was a total. I was a total ass. No, I, well, I, <laughs> yeah, my, my my initial argument was, yeah, everyone in the past year has got a computer that can play this game, which right. I still think is kind of true. But the sad part is, well, yeah, but that's the past year. Exactly. Right. Like I so don't I mean, have, buy you, have you bought a computer in the year? past? Exactly. I, well, the, the thing is, there's always these like these these linchpin moments in time when you mm -hmm. buy the right computer. Right. Right. And when you don't, and I, and I guess. Like my argument back to, like, last week when I was thinking about it was, uh, you know, when Wing Commander first came out, that was an upgrading game. I mean, mm -hmm. people would actually buy sound cards and more RAM right. just to play that. Right. We're clearly at that moment. Exactly. Yeah. With every new game, it's sort of like, okay, is now the time when I do it? We're on is the threshold. Now the time. We're on the threshold of a new age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say Strang Catherine Hepburn. Stranglethorn. <laughs> Stranglethorn. <laughs> Stranglehold is not the game that will make me up. Exactly. I mean, no, I mean, yeah. it, it, it'll be a byproduct game that like, maybe some pe people want to check out afterwards. But I will say, Bi Bioshock. I mean, if I can't play it right away, I will just play the 360 version because yep. I can't not play this immediately. However, mm -hmm. if it turns out I can't play it on the PC, that's <coughs> very likely going to be the straw that breaks the camel's back for me. No, I'm going to just have to upgrade. Have you guys heard about anything? Like, is Bioshock going to be like you know moddable in any way, shape, or I can I can imagine <coughs> it will be. Considering irrational, they're pretty good about that stuff. I don't know. Well, I just think about it this way, like you know, when probably it, like when Oblivion when Oblivion came out, I was like, okay, which one, which version am I yeah. gonna play? And I and I played the console version because I wanted to see it on the big screen and like that whole majestic you know view. Mm -hmm. But then, but then a couple months later, like when I, you know, I had finished the game and all that stuff, and like you see all these mods that came out from the end users on the PC version. Yeah. And I was all, I was totally left out in the cold. I do not I never, know. I never did anything with the Oblivion mods. Oh, you should, man. There's, there's some PC. great stuff out there. Yeah, I played it on the but PC I, I for that reason, and then I didn't and, Yeah, I did that a lot. Thing. I'm like, oh, I'll be able to, like, <laughs> play this game for 900 years. I'll be able to PC create my version. own maps. Oh, wait, I don't give a shit about that. I forgot. <laughs> but I could if I wanted to. I mean, most of the time, I don't even finish you the game they gave me. You bastard. <laughs> uh, so I'm... 
don't know about you guys, but I'm pretty happy for Irrational. I'm very happy for Irrational. You know, one uh, one they, thing uh, I'm sad about. Two, yeah. Two, two, two <laughs> K, okay. You mean 2K Boston? 2K Boston. Well, that's sucky Whatever. timing. I, it's, it's still them, though. I yeah. Mean, yeah. At the end of the day. We can't complain about name changes. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody can't, it's Games for <laughs> Windows, the official magazine. Yeah. Glass houses. It's fine. It's a name. It's them. Right. It's still them. And it sounds like if Ken Levine is to be believed, and why not? Because he's a stand-up guy. That... They're totally cool with it. They're like, hey, 2K made this possible, so... Right. Very true. That's a good point. Right. But, they're you know, Freedom Force freedom. 1 and 2, neither of those. I mean, they were critical favorites. I don't know who bought them at all. Did they sell 10 copies? But those were those were awesome games. And so yeah. it's it's so great to see them actually have... Well, we don't know, we don't know it's great yet, but what looks like it's going to be a great game, that is also going to be popular. You know, that's like it's like a good guys winning sort of story. I haven't been this excited for a game in a very long time. And, and actually, this honestly, is, like and years. Yeah. <coughs> and this is yeah, and yeah. This, and this is a holiday season full of games like that where I'm just like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of stuff to look forward to this holiday. In terms of shooters, for me, I, I don't know. This goes back to like Half Life Two, maybe. I can't even think of another one that hmm. seemed like that was so big in my mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, Garnet on One Up Yours was saying. Uh, uh, Best shooter he's ever played, period. Period. And we called him on it quite a few times, and he kept backing up. I don't know what that says. Well, we'll see. Maybe it says something about him. We'll, we'll know soon well, enough. Well, I, I we'll always, know I, soon enough. I always hate hyperbole, but this could be one of those games. Been getting good reviews so far. We all, we can't wait. And hopefully next week. Wait, it comes out what day? The 21st. Tuesday, right? Uh, as far as I know. Yeah. Damn it. So that's after the next week's podcast. Yeah, so come to, yeah. The, come to the 21st. I'll be sick on the 22nd. <laughs> yeah. Just predicting that right Maybe now. we'll just call it a, a sick day here at work. Sean Malloy, I think you're going to get to play it this week, aren't you? That seems to be the plan. So I, I wonder if you're going to be able to talk about work. it on ye old podcast well, I can't, actually, next he, week. He must be able to because Probably. it, come, well, it, come, it comes out that comes day, out, then yeah. our podcast We just won't want spoilers. That's all. We'll talk in vagaries. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, somebody asked on the uh, message board at OneUp asked me if if I thought it was worth playing the System Shock game, and I said unabashedly, yeah. "Yes, hell yes, play them." And they're probably cheap now. If they're still available, yeah, actually, they should be still around. I think like, they are. Actually, uh, if you do find System Shock Two somewhere, there's also a a, a texture upgrade patch. Oh, that's right. Uh, that some that some modders created years after the fact. Oh, so, I forgot about that. Yeah. Right. So I forget the name of it right now, but you mm -hmm. should totally, you know, check if you if you do find System Shock Two, you should definitely check that out. I bet that game still totally holds up, even with somewhat outdated graphics. Sure. You should go uh, back and play it. Find out. Well, maybe I will. All right. Maybe you will. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> maybe I won't. To Jeremy could do a retronauts on it. Yeah. I just finished uh, the Fear single player campaign again last night. Okay. And any better than the second time around? I liked it a lot. I liked that game the first time. It did. There were some. There were a lot of hallways. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was about to say that was yeah, one hallways, hell of a corporate right? building there. You know, a lot of hallways and staircases. But yep. still, the AI is great. the The atmosphere is great. Playing that game with headphones, a lot of fun. Good story too. Did you find yourself jumping back a lot, like you, like the second time through? You mean out of fright, or or, I, or just kind of like you know? I had a couple moments. moments. I definitely did. I always wonder that, especially with like you know a game you've played before, and you kind of know, okay, this is the part where Alma comes out of, the, yeah. you know, the side. Mm -hmm. If you'll if you'll get it, it again, exactly. Oh, sometimes in some cases that makes it even better because like you're like, oh, this is that part that oh that freaked me out last time. Oh, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> I really did like one. I mean, the only times I think I really jumped is when I thought I was out fooling the AI and got like snuck up on. Which was really cool. Mm -hmm. You know, there were a couple times when they just like got me, and I was like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Good game. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see what what they come up with next. What will they come up with? Next? What will they do next? Those wacky kids in Monolith. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> is anybody say, always, should we hit more uh, what you're playing since we're sort of talking about what we what we want to play? Why the fuck not? Okay. <laughs> Get angry. <laughs> fuck yeah. That's, that's a lot of F-bombs in this week's podcast already. We have to make up for last week. What, when we didn't <laughs> podcast? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, Ryan? Um, well, since, since our last podcast, I have replayed a lot of the old LucasArts games. Really? Mm -hmm. Except Loom. 
What? I did not what, play Loom. What led you down That's that fine. path? Um, I just wanted to play them to see if they held up over time. And did and they? Did they? A lot of them do. I play. I played through Day of the Tentacle. I played uh, through huzzah. all three paths of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, which I think wow. is one of the best ones that one's of the great, bunch. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's gonna, 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 gonna be my favorite. I'm doing Sam and Max hit the road right now, mm -hmm. and then I'm gonna do uh, the Monkey Island game. Is, oh, is Zach McCracken on your list? Zach McCracken that's is a, a game I I tried to play. That that's a game I, I've never quite liked. That was my that, first really? one, and I loved it. That that was that game. Like it, it doesn't give you enough hints. Oh, I don't know. How does that differ from the others? The others. <laughs> I, I think the problem is that each each game has their own kind of unique game logic. Yeah. And if you don't get the logic of the game, Zach McCracken is very yeah. strange from the start. Yep. You know, I mean, it's. Did you guys play these games? Did you play any of them without hints or walkthroughs? I think I played all of them without hints. At all? You never needed a hint for any of the puzzles? I'm trying to remember. Maybe the latter day ones I, when I had it, like internet access. Uh -huh. But like with Indiana Jones and. Oh, like, I guess, yeah, back in the day that was hard. And Maniac right? Mansion and stuff. I had, it was all me. Yeah, when I, when I was. Damn. But I was obsessive. I played a lot of those. When I was a yeah. kid, there was one game that I, I think was. I forget whether it was the original Space Quest or one of the second ones because I wasn't used to the logic yet. Mm -hmm. So I'd, it was one of those games that I really had to like consult a cheat book for. You know, the ones that I actually had with highlighters. Yeah. So you'd like. I, by the by the end, I was like, "Damn it! I don't want to confess that I need the help on this one." So I was like, "I think Day of the Tentacle was one. I loved that game so much because it was so funny." Mm -hmm. But I think I had to keep. It was like CompuServe or something. I kept going to one of those old online BBSs to get answers, and I would read the answer and go, "There's yeah. just no way. My brain would oh. never have done that in a million years." There's a couple. Of, I mean, weren't there any that you were like, "Oh, I should have thought of this"? I think. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah of yes. course. Day of the Tentacle was, you know, back when I was. 13 or whatever that was a game that i recall having a very hard time with a lot of the puzzles mm -hmm. on. and going back through it it's like a lot of the clues for a lot of the puzzles are, are very obvious mm -hmm. and part of that's probably because you know I'm, I'm like kind of vaguely remembering like oh yeah this is what i had to do there right but the, it, it but seems... i think darren's right it's like you, your brain kind of gets trained to think that in that <laughs> yeah cartoon logic or whatever which is why i thought the new sam and max games were so good is because they yes. totally like latched back onto that yeah, yeah they, they did. Did. you they have been trained to do this yeah these make sense in their own crazy way and right. there's only like maybe one puzzle in the whole series that made me go eh. there are a couple I... times when i cheated out of laziness just because i wanted <laughs> to get i just wanted to get to the next step i was like okay i there's got to be i'm i not, know i missed and then when i would read like, it i would go oh whole, shit yeah duh right it's always stuff like that okay. just because of the nature of those like Something you think should work, like because you're not hovering over the right place at the right time, it's right. not working, and then you don't realize it's totally the great right. thing those games do is when you go to do the obvious thing that, of course, is never going to be the answer mm -hmm. ever, and they always like call you on it, you know. <laughs> if it's like there's a lever to pull, mm -hmm. you know, when you pull it, then the character who's standing there is, will always like insult you, you know, like, yeah, yeah, I thought of that, nice try, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. All right. What do you think was the okay? Now this, this, I I think I know what everyone's gonna answer on this one. What do you think is the stupidest puzzles? Lucas, Sierra, whatever. Yeah, yeah. we're all gonna say that. Game we are gonna Night say the same thing. thing. We are yeah. gonna say <laughs> Which one? Because I gave Real Night Three puzzle with the cat hair mustache. Like. Yeah. Well, I didn't play that one. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, you have missed a really bad puzzle. That there that, was one in Fate of Atlantis, I think. Maybe you just played this, so you probably remember where there's like a comb. You have to make like some sort of compass out of a comb and a needle that, and honey that, or something s ridiculous. You, you have to what you have it's to like do. Like Mr. Wizard <laughs> Project, you know. <laughs> you have to tie. There's like a, a string or something, and you uh -huh. tie it to this comb, and you rub the comb with a scarf to charge it with static electricity. There, the clues are in the game to tell you that this, these things that you're looking for respond to static electricity. So it's not okay. It's set up. A bit. It's set up. I mean, you wasn't get some clues. when I played. <laughs> but the thing is, that that item, if you if you play on either of the other paths, uh -huh. there there is a different item that that uh, accomplishes the same thing, and you're told in specific terms that that's what it's for. So if you've played the other paths, I think you'll have a better idea that hey, this is. I'm supposed All to I remember like about that is uh, when I was playing that game, I was playing on a friend's computer in college, like in the dorms, and he had already finished it, and he told me he's like, "There's going to be a puzzle." <laughs> And it's going to have a comb or whatever it was. <laughs> and you will have no fucking idea what you have to do. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. And I was like tearing my hair out. I didn't want to ask him, but it was just driving me insane for days. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
But you had never played me. the other two paths of the game. No, this is okay. what game? Fate of Atlantis. Fate of Atlantis. Yeah, I think I, I think I uh, diverted from your Baby All Night three thing. What uh, you say that's about that? fine. Now, well, yeah. the thing is, the 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 advantage of the Lucas Arts games or any game like that is like they can have that cartoon logic where the, the where the answers are ridiculous because you're playing a cartoon. Right. But if the game has any kind of like supposed realism to it, and then they have that kind of puzzle, you're just like, what? Like, do you give her, Robert Coffey used to tell the story about, um, it was also a Sierra game. I don't know if it was Phantasmagoria or it might have even, oh, I think it was Gabe, well, Gabriel Knight. Well, it was, the, it it was, the, it was the wallet under the couch I think it was. I, th I think it was the same game, actually. It, was the, it I mean, might have been the same game where, you know, your character's wallet is under the couch and there's a whole puzzle to get it. Like, there's a, the <laughs> like there's a mouse on. You have to get the mouse under there, so you have to put cheese to get the mouse, so the mouse pushes it. But out. right, you're like whatever. But Robert's I'm a like, human why being. can't I just fucking reach <laughs> under the couch and grab my wallet? I drop my fucking wallet. Right. And pick the damn thing up. And and the the notorious puzzle that we're all thinking of is is from Gabriel Knight Three, where the protagonist has to go somewhere in disguise. <laughs> and so she, it's a she, right? It's a guy. It's, it's, oh, no, it's a guy. It's a, it's, it's a guy. Oh, it's Gabriel Knight. Yeah. The, right. Billy. But apparently not Gabriella Knight. <laughs> Gabriel Knight has to go somewhere, and he needs a mustache to take a photo for a fake passport picture. Is that right? This is, it, It's more absurd <laughs> than that because the photo, the dude in the photo that you're trying to disguise yourself right. as, he doesn't even have a mustache in the photo, and you draw the mustache onto him. Oh, you draw the, you're right. <laughs> right? And but then, then, then the making of your fake mustache involves, like, <laughs> syrup... You have to get like a piece of syrup, of cat, cat hair. hair. You have to get, the, you have to like trap this cat or get this cat to run through a fence so hairs come off. So you, then you could take syrup and and stick the hairs onto the syrup so they'll stick to your face. Is this one of the, the FMV ones? Fucking thing. No. Oh, no, okay. that would be even better. No. <laughs> yeah, watching that in full motion video. Oh, and and awesome. that was that to us. Yeah, that became the CGW like classic. Well, that's everybody's. No. You know. Yeah. No. <laughs> There was this whole thing. Did you guys ever read um, Old Man Murray? Of course. Oh, yeah. There was this whole thing where, where uh, Eric Wolpaw from Old Man Murray is just going off about that puzzle and how that was like the death of adventure games. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that particular moment. It kind yes. of was. It kind of was. That was that was where we all jumped off the ship. We were, you know, the blinders <laughs> came off. We weren't in the Mooney cult anymore. We were like, this is fucking stupid. No. I'm not putting... Syrup on cat hairs and sticking them to my lip? Fuck you. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> they said you were a genius game designer. Screw you. Yeah, so uh, so Roberta Williams then sort of uh, like left the industry, the uh, designer of that game, who in fact no, no, was no. not, sorry, J Jane, Jane, Jane Jensen. Jensen. My bad, Jane Jensen. Uh, Roberta Williams had some similar awful Right, last she did. Games. Yeah, they both had similar awful last games. I mean, really, those games were kind of a, a product of the of the time, right? I mean, it was harder. Well, that's that's oversimplifying it because you could still do them now. But I think th they were caught. That was at you know around 1998, 1999, and Half Life was coming around. The shooters were coming around, and it was sort of the idea that you could set an adventure game sort of uh, <coughs> gameplay mechanic in a 3D world mm -hmm. or in some right. like real world. It just it didn't mesh, except for Mist. <laughs> what? Not great. What the hell? <laughs> what the? I like that. Did you like Mist? I did. Mist I played the first one. Oh, and Riven. I loved Riven. Really? I'm crazy though, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I was on board for Mist. It's I like the abstraction of it. <laughs> I thought it was. Well, come on. I mean, at the time, it was truly different. Wouldn't you give it that? Yeah, you want you it want was, no well, you I'll want no logic. That. I'll give you Riven. <laughs> it was yeah. different. I thought they were cool. I mean, you know, I did not understand not this whole mist online thing. I was around for a little while though. I don't well, think it's, a lot it's, of other people understood on. it. Is it either. still on? It's, like it's, tap, it's, it's, it? it's through Game Tap now. So you could actually play it online now. Yeah. There's like one guy right now standing <laughs> standing by a giant gear, someone, someone waiting waiting, waiting for lovers. someone else to log on. <laughs> I know if we just push this gear, <laughs> that part of the island will rotate. Somebody else do it. And then I can finally finish this game. <laughs> Please, someone log on. <laughs> Anyone? He's, he's like the old errant. <laughs> he's like the errant knight from Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade waiting for someone else to show up. Yeah. There's nine million people in WoW and one guy in Mist Online begging for help. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so you were talking about LucasArts. So what were the ones that uh, didn't work? for you the one that 
I, I thought it didn't quite hold up to like what what it was in my memory was Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Hmm. Which that that was the first LucasArts game I ever played. So. That and that's the one that didn't hold up. Yeah. And why? Um, Wasn't that well, just like con was it? Wait, was that the one with consequence-free conversations? Just kind of keep rolling. That up? was the one before that. That was the one that Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was one of the few Lucas Arts games where so death death was a oh a yeah constant oh, okay, okay, consideration. Okay. Yep. And so you the, you know, um, I mean, you guys have all seen the movie. There's this whole sequence where he's wandering around Castle Brunewald looking for his dad, and you're doing that in the game, and you have to you you get into all these conversations with um with Nazi so soldiers. And the wrong conversation choices lead you into fights. The fights and sucked. And the fight mechanic <laughs> okay, in the Indiana Jones yeah. games were sucked. really, really bad. Yeah. And if you Awful. lost a fight, you, you died. So you would have to, there would always be like a correct conversation tree to get through. E each soldier had like a specific thing he would respond to and like he would leave you alone. But like it was all trial and error figuring out which one goes to which soldier. Mm -hmm. And that, that part, that, like that was like 50% of the game's puzzles. It's like these conversation puzzles. Yeah. So, so that it's it's very frustrating because it's all just trial and error. The Monkey Island was after this one, right? Yeah, because right. that's when they came up with insult sword that. fighting, which was so much. That better. was so fun. <laughs> oh, that was I loved great. The insult well, Monkey sword Island fighting. was the point where, like, when you were presented with a conversation, you could say whatever you want. Yeah. And there was never a consequence. Right. And you're always it was tempted still to choose the stupid it's, one. It was good. Yeah. You know. So. That's my f that's my f personal favorite Lucas Art series is the Monkey. Oh my god, series. I love it. Yeah, but the third one was by far like my look was just so so well done on every level. Which that was, uh, that was the one with the uh, return the, or the curse. Curse. The, the, curse the, uh, that was the curse animated up. looking one. Yeah. Oh my god, that one was so good. But even the one after that, the three D one was still fun. I still liked Escape from, even though it didn't have the mm -hmm. you know, the same same people and stuff. Mm -hmm. Still good. Yeah. So I wonder if they'll do a new Indiana Jones game with the new movie. Well, didn't Probably they already? Won't be well, one of these. well, they already had that demo at E three. I just don't know if it's coming to the PC. It, it better. I mean, it's not like an adventure. It's a game. threat. It's <laughs> yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's it's more of an action game, I think. No, they're yeah. not gonna, they're not going back to those. I don't think. I mean, no. it's like after that they started like Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine and Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb, and they're sort of like Tomb Raider ish. No, whatever. Games. Yeah, they 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 pretty much mothballed their whole adventure line. Mm -hmm. It's it kind of I mean, like you well, you know from from doing back the Santa Max story back in the day, they they, they have a finished game somewhere sitting on a, on, a sh on a shelf, basically. Of that, what? That last Santa Max game. That basically. Yeah, but didn't that look like shit when we saw it? I think you're thinking of full throttle. throttle. Oh, you're thinking of full throttle. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that was like the, the happiest I ever was to hear of a game cancellation. Thank you for not shitting on one of my favorite games. <laughs> I mean, we were yeah. so happy to hear about full throttle 2 at first. Coming at out. first. And then we saw then we it saw and we were like, oh, dear. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Com combos? Were there combos in that game? <laughs> I can't remember I think exactly. so. The whole demo was like, yeah, it was like, it was an, <laughs> like a fighting game. It was like, like a really... action game. Yeah, it was a like Grand Theft Full Throttle. Yeah. Ugh. That sounds awful. Yeah. It was pretty awful. <laughs> so what else are you playing, Ryan? Or is it the LucasArts <laughs> games enough to keep you busy this weekend? Um, <clears throat> well, I've been kind of slowly going through those for the last couple weeks. Um, that's about it. Give Zach McCracken a shot. Zach, yeah, I, that's all we're, that's we they're are saying. saying. <laughs> I, would, yeah, yeah, I, I tried. I, I, I loaded up <laughs> Zach McCracken. <laughs> I was so into that game. I'm sorry. I was looking. I was looking at an FAQ on Game Facts just to see like what kind of the progression was in those first areas, and it's like stuff that I would have never have thought to try. Or you know, I, I don't understand people who like that game. I was so <laughs> into that game that I figured out how to play the theme music on piano. <laughs> oh my god! It's <laughs> oh, god, man. And everything. Zach McCracken has has a good. Has <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Sean Malloy has a problem we didn't know about. <laughs> I, I think I think we have our next. I'm intro obsessed right? with transcribing <laughs> sheet music of video games. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, I think we might have the the uh, oh, the intro for our next podcast <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just pull I, out that sample. <laughs> I, I must confess, there are, there are plenty of video game themes and other like movie themes and stuff that I have I have taught myself how to play on the keyboard by ear. Mm -hmm. so, you, you know, know Zelda, I assume. Oh, I know Zelda. Okay. I can do Zelda. Good. I can do, do Monkey too? Island. I'll have to do a Zelda fight later. Wait, how <laughs> does Monkey Island go? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna well, let's out. spend the whole rest of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I can do LeChuck's theme. 
Oh wow! Okay, I'm just gonna bust out some Axel there. F. And just... <laughs> this is this is gonna be great for someone's commute. Wow, <laughs> going to work. <laughs> <laughs> and, and now the I can eight... play the Metroid theme in piano. Can you? <laughs> Dang! And now wow. the G- I, can't, I can't do that one. And now the GFW 8-bit symphony. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know there was such mutant talent. <laughs> Who, knew? <laughs> Who knew? Oh yeah. Who knew? This is definitely. We'll a have talent. an all-singing podcast one of these days. <laughs> we'll all... And now. GFW's got talent. <laughs> GFW the musical. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Darren, what about you? All right. Well, well kind of going off uh, Ryan's tip, I actually uh, found a piece of freeware this weekend that I thought was kind of interesting. It's called uh, Fate by Numbers. Um, it's a full motion video graphic adventure for free. It's somebody just full put together. Vi- wow. It's a, it's, a sci- it's a sci-fi noir, <laughs> kind of like, kind of like uh, over uh, Under a Killing Moon, mm-hmm. Blade Runner-ish kind of style. All And it's... It's a 1.2 gig download, but it, it's actually pretty cool. It's full motion video. Full motion video. So All they done. got actors. They got actors. Throwback. Total throwback to like 99. Wow. Like, was it 97? Even, even or the like That's the scary. 3D rendered backgrounds look like they're from is it, Under a Killing Moon. Is it? Yeah, like, totally. Is it on purpose cheesy, or is it, or is it not cheesy, or it looks cheesy? It, it looks cheesy, but unintentionally so. So it's still kind of weird. basically. Oh, it's not intentional. Oh, well, I, 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 <laughs> I, I, I don't know. But I th- I think that it's it, it, the way it was produced. It actually reminds me of like I wouldn't be surprised if someone would have paid money for that for that game back in the day. Hmm. So if you, I mean it's an interesting graphic adventure and certainly it isn't, it isn't you know a bad mm-hmm. you know just download it overnight and check it out the next day kind of thing. So is it the same? It's the same <laughs> style of gameplay as that totally. those old games like. Well, there's like you know conversation. There's obviously you know conversations, right. but like you walk, you start off in your office, and you uh, you, you you search for hotspots on screen, and you mm-hmm. you know call up, turn on your computer, check out your email, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, and when you say actually- full motion video, I think Phantasmagoria, which makes me cringe. <laughs> <laughs> So there were a couple. There were there were a couple good ones. Not not many, but there were a couple. What I what I saw when when you were when you were uh, playing the the trailer for that game looked pretty cool. Yeah. Did you guys ever play Spycraft? To me, oh, that, yeah, that yeah. was one of the great ones. Mm-hmm. Activision, that was, a, that was a good one. Uh-huh. And be, and it just reminded me because of the saying, you know, turning on your computer. Like, in that game, they actually used, it made sense. They had you do things that made sense for the fact that you were sitting behind <coughs> a keyboard and the screen. It was like it was like a mini games almost with these little things like, uh, it kind of reminded, one part reminded me of the, the Gina Hackman movie, The Conversation. Right. Where you're trying to triangulate. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you had to, like, triangulate the sound. Yeah, to eavesdrop on conversations. That stuff was kind of cool. That was pretty cool. I mean, there are some games that, you know, there were some, you know, FMV games that actually w- were decent. Gabriel Knight 2, which I believe we gave our Game of the Year award. Gabriel Knight 2, point. that's right. Yeah. yeah. Not, I was trying to get the numbers right. Yeah, we did give that the Game of the Year. That was the, the same year as uh, everybody in the whole planet Earth gave it to something else. And did you regret it? Every, every CGW the cu- gave it to... Gabriel Knight. It was this was before I started. Oh. I just remember it was right after it was right after I came on and people were still kind of shaking their heads. Was it Grim Fandango? That. No, no, no. No, no, no that, that was that really was later. Much later, right? Oh, it that was, like, was, it was okay. like do, was Grim it, was Fandango was the year that was that ninety eight, which was the right? year of uh, Half Life One, Starcraft, and Grim Fandango. Oh my god, all came out in the same like year. The greatest year ever. It was kind of the greatest year ever, and half life pretty much got them all i remember blizzard was so bummed out you know right. cuz they made starcraft you know mm-hmm. that's a hard it, how, how does that not get game of the year but half life was you know Yikes. fucking you couldn't deny it and and then grim fandango got totally shut out was doom 2 the f- same year as gabriel knight 2 maybe doom, doom 1 2 i don't uh, think doom, doom 1 was, was 95 right i think uh, damn it wikipedia where are you <laughs> yeah well, uh, whatever all right well, the PC Gaming Authority. <laughs> <laughs> you are listening to it. <laughs> You're listening. To I G- could probably play it on piano, whatever it is. You know what we need us down here is. <laughs> 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 we Dude, don't know even, shit, yeah. but we can play <laughs> any game tune for a bunch you. of musical savants. Just here. ask us, and we'll hum it. <laughs> uh, anything else? Uh, World in Conflict. Uh, yeah, you got that running. Got the got the gold up and running uh, last night. I was out of town. Mm-hmm. But when I got home, that was, the, that was the first thing I had to do. And, man, that game looks awesome. It just looks so beautiful on, on my computer. Are you I, playing it in DX10 or, um, or 9? I'm actually playing it on Invista, so I guess that would make it DX10. Uh-huh. And uh, I didn't, I'm didn't. actually trying to figure out. Right, right now I'm running into some hitches at work, but at home it looks great. So this is Sierra's. Uh, this is Vivendi's. Vivendi's uh, here, 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 <laughs> Angry Ryan stepping up to the bat. 
Uh, I can't help but notice that there's a Sierra, a big, nice, old-style Sierra logo when you start the game. Well, they tr- they're, they're I don't tr- really they're know why the they're using there. that, because they are called Vivendi Games. <laughs> <laughs> what is your deal? You have He's an angry, angry one-man man. Don Quixote like, <laughs> rant against... What's what's the story there? They're, they they don't get to use the name Sierra. God damn it! So what, you're saying this in your official it. legal capacity as yes, as for Pew's as editor, Judge Ryan say. says, <laughs> Judge Judy here. I see. You can't use that name exactly. Until okay. so you bring back Leisure Suit Larry and do it right, you cannot <laughs> <laughs> call it on the Sierra game. I uh, can use it for my fan remakes. I you know <laughs> I keep getting this game <laughs> mixed up with Universe at War. World There's a lot conflict. of things at war. Something in something. Universe, world, it's in, in... It's like Steven location Seagal movie in titles syndrome. You know, they location just, in, so, yeah, in trouble. You know, they should have just called the game Red Dawn. People would have gotten it in two seconds. Oh, uh, is that what... Okay, that's right. That's this game. See? There that's you a go. problem. I can't remember. But, right, this is the one with the Ruskies uh, It's attacking. just the, the re- world, not the universe. Universe implies, right. you know... There's some big shit going on. Uh-huh. Right. <laughs> That game looks cool too. That game is cool yeah. too. Actually, so this, I played that last Do you get to play week. as uh, the Ruskies in this in World in Conflict? Yes, you do. <laughs> Both. I'm <Ruskies>. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Datovarish. I'm just getting in character. Yeah. yeah so no. Actually, Tommy Red um, thinks. <laughs> <laughs> back. Back in time. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's right. Dial. Dial it back to '86. Uh-huh. No, but um, yeah. So in multiplayer, I mean, obviously, it's you know, you could do R- Ruskies versus uh, mm-hmm. U.S. Whatever. But in the single player campaign. Uh, at least as far as I've played right now, you start off as basically U.S. Mm-hmm. And you go through the missions. I'm, I'm getting to... Uh, I'm, I think you get to the point where you switch sides and you get their side of the story. Mm-hmm. But uh, what little i played so far, it's um, really well done, really st- structured well. It's it, Actually, I was really impressed by like how much of... like The game starts off in Seattle. And the fact is they have so much detail in, in this. Like, I was actually just curious... I was zooming down to like street level, like right next to a tank or right next to mm-hmm. the uh, characters, uh, mm-hmm. you know, a trooper, like you know, there's some some stupid little unit, and it looks mm-hmm. so amazingly detailed. Like, they, mm-hmm. like this engine is r- crazy powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, the gameplay itself are the <clears throat> are the missions like, uh, I mean, is it like a Company of Heroes style yeah, thing? Yeah, kind or of. I mean, is it, there a resource well, gathering at well, all, well, or is it all just uh, like wasn't it more like ground combat? control? Well, it's, it is like ground control because it is from those guys. Right. So I mean, like it, it, you have. Uh, points allocated, you can choose what you want to call in for the battle. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, what it, um, those points generate back. So, like you have a, a, a you have a set number, and you, as you accomplish more goals, that number increases. Right. So you can like uh. so it's so like for example, like a tank is uh-huh. a light tank is like say five hundred units. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You 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 use that, and let's say uh, your tactics need to change. You can say, okay, I'm going to get rid of that tank. Mm-hmm. It takes a couple seconds for that 500 unit credit to come back into mm-hmm. your account, and then you can go buy something else. It's a teeny bit like what they're talking about with StarCraft Two, little bit. What? What? The uh, the starting missions, you know, the way you you're going to be buying, uh, <coughs> you're going to be buying units in StarCraft Two rather than well, following in a, between uh, missions. In is between that, missions. Uh-huh. In be- well, well, no, this is actually you start off with. Oh, this is right? during. This is actually during the campaign. So, like, this is actually during. Okay. A mi- so, this is actually during a mission. Oh, so, during like, a mission. So right. basically, like on the fly, Never you're mind. like yeah. on the fly, you're actually making all these tactical choices I and switching it up. And it, it kind of it, it speeds up the pace and makes it all, it makes it roll a lot smoother than the usual RTS where you like you're following a tech tree and mm-hmm. you got all this crap. Basically, the stuff's there, and as long as you have the the, the number of units to afford it, mm-hmm. you, you you can you can just have one tank, or you could have a whole bunch of you know anti tank troops. I mean, it's just mm-hmm. a matter of how you want to play the tactics. Mm. I would like to play it if my machine would cooperate. Then I will. Is it so is the game the out yet, or did we get it? Uh, we got we got gold code. We it's coming gold. out pretty soon. It's gone gold, people. Gone gold. gold. But there is a lot of good stuff. And, and for yeah. and, and for the five like, and, the, and for the five like uber rich people on the planet, it supports dual monitor support. So take a hit a toggle, and you can have that that beautiful graphics across two screens. Yeah, I'm not that insane. I just <laughs> the, only, the, the only reason I bring that up is when I was at QuakeCon, I saw a couple people sure with like that those kind of hardcore right. setups at QuakeCon watching porn, no less, of course. <laughs> Wow. Really? Seriously, uh, that, that was kind of, quick that, was, that was definitely a sketch moment. Well, they have this huge like you know they have the bring your own computer total segue. Uh, they yeah. have this they have this whole uh, bring your own computer area. Uh-huh. Yeah. And there was like I think I gotta say it, uh, roughly twenty eight hundred people in this huge room. Mm-hmm. You know they bring their own, their own rigs. They have like uh, you know mo- modding competitions for their computers, mm-hmm. and they're playing. They're like some guys are sitting there around the clock playing. 
other guys, you know, go out and drink afterwards. But like, there's some people. I, I saw some dudes like with porn on their computers. Like, I guess during the low tide, they went to QuakeCon, brought their computer, and watched porn on it. I know. It's I'm. I was kind of. They're comfortable enough dude, to just yeah, whip did they out not the porn. They weren't. Like, in hey there. guys, I'm there was some gonna sk- whip it out here. And <laughs> oh no, I, you know what? I didn't. I did not see any of that. Although there was one picture allegedly floating around the web. Yeah, where I, I saw that. That, that must have been so doctored, but. Or, he, or he's either that or he's holding a hot dog. Or something, uh, yeah, I guess you got to feel pretty comfortable in your environment if you're just Apparently. watching porn at QuakeCon. Was, you're, you're among <laughs> friends at QuakeCon. Right. Who They're, isn't doing that, you're thinking? I'm thinking that. Right. <laughs> that was, that was pretty sketchy. But, yeah, aside from that, it was actually kind of a cool show, but. <laughs> yeah. <I hear>. yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, aside from that. That guy thought he was so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I actually had that video. Look, at guys. Look guys, I got porn. <laughs> I couldn't uh, he wait, really? No, he could not. I guess he couldn't. <laughs> I it's guess like, the answer is no. I, I'm just, yeah, my, my, thought, my thought was, don't you have a room in the hotel? I mean, yeah. is, is it really that important? It's, yeah. <laughs> but again, apparently, yes, it was that important. Maybe the site had just uploaded, you know, the new stuff that day. <laughs> You've been hitting refresh. <laughs> the latest the update was five hours. Hours. <laughs> like, oh, it's a Brenda. I've been <laughs> 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 All right, let's move on. Uh-huh. Uh, Sean Malloy. Um, I've been having a lot of tech troubles. Have you now? I'm yeah. Sorry. I thought, wait, I, th- I thought my... I They're kind of better. It's weird. We're still trying to figure it out, so we have... So, really, so, so the second Game part. time is either WoW or tech support. So we've got, like, what? Now three cards? <laughs> <laughs> I've, he, I've now given him, like, half my graphics card supply just to make sure to find one that works. We can we, troubleshoot. We put in a, an ATN, like, ATI 2900 XT, mm-hmm. which, you know... Really good card. Yeah. Put it in. Ran worse than the piece of crap that oh, came shit. in it. It was it was baffling. We were like, why? I couldn't run things over like, you know, ten twenty four by seven sixty eight. Small problem. And yeah, it was like slower than the old card, which you can now get for like thirty bucks or whatever it can be. So we had no idea what was going on. We stripped out the drivers. We put new and drivers. You know. Yeah. So let me put like. Something that was like a step back, the uh, sixteen fifty. It, it was a sixteen fifty, I think. So it's still good. Mm-hmm. So now that runs okay, but it's mm-hmm. still not quite as good as the old crappy card, and we have no idea what's going on. So It'll I think we're gonna. The next machine. step is like either a new machine or like just try. The, well, what do you the, have? The start over with Windows thing. Well, what do, what do yeah. you have right now? Duh. I mean, like. I don't know. <laughs> 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 uh, some computer from a couple years ago. <laughs> I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> the PC Gaming Authority. <laughs> again. Yeah, again. I got a... Well, this is Keith's machine. What do you call a... My machine is, like, worse. Like, we don't even use it anymore. I just use my laptop. So any any hardcore gaming, I go on Keith's machine. And mm-hmm. He bought it, so I don't really know what's different. You know, I bought a Dell laptop, an XPS laptop, no less. So a good one. Less than a year ago, and the frickin' battery is dead already. I mean, really? I already had to replace fully dead? it. I bought fully dead. I had to buy a new one. Hundred sixty bucks. Is this part of the Sony like batteries? That were, like they were, they had a recall. On no, Sony it wasn't batteries. part of that recall. Nope. Huh. Battery lasted less than a year. Wow, that so that suck. That really that sucks. That does well. suck. I've had a Bio for three years, and yeah. it has been the best, most stable computer in human history. Have oh. you not replaced a battery? <laughs> Nothing. Wow, well, I, I it's can't never cra- it. it's never crashed. Wow, well, right? and I had the exact opposite experience with the Bio. Really? It was probably the most unstable machine I ever used. It was uh, unbelievably good. Now that I've said that, I'll go home and it'll explode. Right. But hey, three years isn't bad. I got it, bro. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I got to tell. Can I remember the last uh, time we podcasted and we were telling? Not really. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so well, it was last some time a while ago. We were talking about uh, doing tech support for our uh, oh, friends yes. and parents. So I got another one from this weekend. <laughs> you reminded me of when you were talking about doing tech support. My dad called me up Sunday afternoon. I'm like trying to just enjoy my day, and. Uh, and it, Jeffrey, I'm having a problem with my uh, with my laptop again. So the problem is, like he <clears throat> he uh, his wireless network. He's he's on his laptop, and his wireless speed has gone way, 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 way down from an excellent signal like to very low. So I figured right away, well, he just glommed onto somebody else's wireless network in in his condo thing, which actually that did turn out to be the problem. That was exactly what it was. <clears throat> but all I wanted him to do was uh, t- was take the mouse pointer and put it over the wireless icon so he could tell me, you know, what it said there for the uh-huh. name of the network. And we spent 15 minutes, 15 minutes while he's like, <laughs> I just, I can't get the mouse 
<laughs> I can't move the mouse pointer over. I'm moving the mouse, and it's not going over to the thing. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's check. Is your mouse plugged in? <laughs> well, where do I check that? So we're like going through all this shit. I, we finally ascertained, yes, his mouse is plugged in. It's all hooked up. I had him go into the mouse control <laughs> panel, This whole, all this bullshit. And mouse control w- panel. When, it, when it was finally all said and done, the reason why he couldn't get the mouse pointer over the icon was because he was moving the mouse to his desktop computer, which was sitting next to his laptop <laughs> computer. <laughs> so he was actually moving the wrong mouse around. <laughs> oh, yeah. my That God. was the first 15 minutes. So imagine how long it took to ascertain oh, like, to what wireless network he was on. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I, you know what? I have infinite respect now for anyone who does tech, phone tech support, like for Dell or whomever. I was thinking that at the time. Holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dad, let's start over. Yeah, the mouse. Is it in your hands? I just felt like one of those guys, you know, you're talking to from <laughs> India. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Anyway, oh man, that's my Sunday. So we're gonna we're gonna take a break and we're gonna come back with very very important topics that you've all been waiting to hear us talk about for the last two weeks. Oh yeah. So we're finally getting to those. So yeah. you don't want to miss it. We'll be back with all that big stuff you've been waiting for. Three, <laughs> two, one. You're the best around. Listen to EGM Live, the weekly podcast for Electronic Gaming Monthly, available every Monday for download at egmlive.1up.com or podcast.1up.com or the iTunes Music Store. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Johnny. Sweep the leg. So we're back. And now finally we're going to get to all that stuff. This and list is thanks huge. For, thanks for waiting, and uh, I know you've been really impatient and excited to hear us talk about it. Um, what are these what, things, What do Jeff? we got? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What, what, do we, what do we have? Well, what happened to BlizzCon? Oh, we could Dare talk we about talk BlizzCon. about the BlizzCon? We could. We talked about it a little bit on uh, Legendary Thread, but there may not be a lot of crossover there between uh-huh. Legendary Thread and GFW listeners. Also, it was a long time ago. Now. It was. Kind of ancient history. Yeah, technically. However, it was a good show. It was. Very good show. I highly recommend to anybody who has the, the time and the uh, the uh, money to get yourself once in your lifetime to one of these fan conventions of some sort. Because they are really a lot of fun. They are. They're awesome. The They're... panels are so entertaining. That is what I go for, <laughs> I've decided. Yeah, they really are. You, you couldn't... Like, I know it's hard to imagine sitting there for two days to just hear about one or two games. In this case, two, but like the first one is really just one. Mm-hmm. Um, but I could do that for three more days, I think. It really is incredible. I mean, I, I would assume that any MMO or any game, really, that has a passionate audience where where there's a lot of decision-making going on and there's a lot of identity with your own character is going to draw you know, really Im- impassioned people to it. So it's always every, the the two years they've done it, this at BlizzCon, the big, <laughs> the big panel is the the character class one. So you've got members of the d- design team up on the stage, and you've got hundreds, I don't know, thousands, thousands, thousands of people sitting in the audience. Um, you know, booing and yaying and <laughs> I was just gonna throwing say. things and lining up, you know, this endless line of people with questions. Oh god. You know, you know the longest panel. In ever. the last patch, you took down the priests the, whatever. You know, it's it's the most random minor thing and you know, their faces broadcast on these giant, you know, <laughs> auditorium filled screens, these like horrible, you know, <laughs> nervous, pimply guys with these with these like really specific dorky questions. <laughs> and and then the, the greatest thing is when they ask it and they you know, if they've asked some like popular question about like the last time, you know, that that when Priest got boned in the last patch, you know, if he brings up that issue, you know, there's like a thousand priests in the audience who are like, <laughs> you know, a big roar from the crowd. You know, it's, Man, a, I, it's I, really a funny experience. I, I just like, have this image in my head of, so, like, of like some like oversized dude with like like arm fat dangling. He's going, <gasps> like, well, there the is crowd. quite a bit of that. Yeah, yeah. a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty rad. And lots of great <laughs> questions. And and the Blizzard guys like took it in in pretty good stride too. You know. Oh yeah, they totally do. Yeah. And, you know, they laugh off the you know dumb questions just like the whole audience does if you ask something stupid. Watch out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but they're, yeah. Good, they're they, good entertainers too up there. Mm-hmm. Did they come up with anything? I mean, did they say anything cool? Like, what are they doing? 
Anything? <laughs> anything big in the next patch? I mean, what what was ascertained from this? this there's panel? some sort of expansion well, they, or something. Yeah, there's a big expansion. Which no, this, oh, from this, this specific panel. panel? I didn't go to panel. that panel. Jeff, uh, from that panel, <laughs> yes, they talked. To, they warned the warlocks that there's out there, including me, that there's probably going to be a little be bit a nerf of, uh, coming, nerfing coming up Woo! for us. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I threw some shit at the stage when they said that. Yeah, <laughs> I actually rushed the stage and hit one of them. <laughs> no, you will not. Uh, and uh, what else did we learn? Uh, oh, they talked about how they're going to. Uh, Speed up the leveling now in down the line. The one no, the twenty to sixty path is going to be sped up the the leveling progression. That is good. Nice. Yeah. So since we've all done it rush. like eight hundred times now, yeah. they're going to give us a break down the line. So it's awful nice of them. I like that. Yeah. Um, is there anything else really to say about the show? Another great uh, BlizzCon fact that you you haven't read uh, or heard about elsewhere in all the various other media, is that on the second day, on the Saturday, <clears throat> a bunch of us were uh, out front, and there was a very, uh, very serious-looking, important uh, religious convention. Some kind of... Uh, I believe I it was Couples for Christ. Couples for Christ convention happening in the same auditorium. And oh. it was the most awesome juxtaposition because you had people dressed up like... You know, Torin chieftains and warlocks. Right, and their warlock demon costumes. Warlock demon <laughs> costumes. And then you had these people coming in for this Couples for Christ uh, thing. And what we were really just regretting was that there wasn't just a gigantic Diablo head <laughs> <laughs> on the front of the Anaheim Convention right. Center. There was no, like... Diablo it, welcomes you. It's like, oh, too bad they didn't, like, announce a new Diablo game or something. <laughs> people running out of the auditorium. Diablo! Is coming in 2009. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that, that would have been the most awesome slogan for both conventions. <laughs> Diablo is coming. They actually could have shared. They would have all been, yes, he is. <laughs> and we would have been, yes, he is. They could have shared money for the sign. <laughs> Coast brought to you by Blizz, BlizzCon and. So that was that was pretty funny though. We really it was were funny to us. <laughs> it was funny that we were we thinking like, with that. you know, the Anaheim Convention Center people may want to sort of think about their scheduling options. Eh. Mm -hmm. You know, what they know about they didn't know Blizzard was like, you know, not have the satanic, you know, <laughs> game players in at the same time. It's, the, it's, it's more it's, pagan yeah. than satanic. Yeah, you're right. We're we're more pagan. <laughs> not nearly as religious. There was a, a similar kind of juxtaposition in, in, in at QuakeCon. Yeah. There was uh, at the same time they had all like you know however many thousand gamers there. There was uh, I think like. 4,000 or however many thousand Mary Kay cosmetic sales women and, oh, a, wow. and, and a thousand accountants. So I was like, here you have like these heavily, wow. he heavily made up women from like the Midwest mm -hmm. versus with guys, you know, coupled with guys who are, you know, really need to take, you know, shower a little more often. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like the Amish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, Quake the Amish. and Quakers. There probably wasn't a big crossover <laughs> with the Mary Kay and QuakeCon attendees. You'd be surprised, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, 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 I talked to a couple of the guys. They actually tried picking up a couple of Mary Kay cosmetic cells. Oh, uh, yeah. It was, sure they did. That was, that was uh -huh. comedy in action, I'm uh -huh. sure. The ones who weren't watching porn on there. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you I got some porn on my computer. You want to come check it out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's our convention report. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you liked it. Uh, we'll probably go into more of this. At, on Legendary Thread, too. Yeah. Uh, that's more right. its, a, its domain. Yes. And, and like you said, they announced the WoW expansion. They did announce the WoW expansion. Now, I guess it's on our next cover. Too. It is on the cover. We don't like to, you know, pimp our magazine every once in a while. But go buy our magazine. But go buy our magazine. Games for Windows, the official magazine. It's cool. On sale now. Uh, yeah, we got a... Sean Malloy went and saw... I went with him. He went too. But he did all the work. So he wrote the uh, uh, Wrath of the Lich King story. And uh, so this is uh, pretty much the first expansion, kind of like the upcoming Guild Wars expansion that is, I think, really, uh, you know, it's for the it's for the long-term players. Yeah, it's, this just, is end, not it's the, just end game stuff. Right. This is not the, the noob expansion. Right. There is no new race, no new newbie zone. Right. I'm not so sure I'm crazy about that, to be honest with you. I am. Well, well I'm, you I'm, haven't I'm, put in the 8,000 hours like Sean has. So. <laughs> You're not still playing well anyway, right? I actually, I want to go back to playing. I, but um, see, you can't. The new stuff doesn't even matter until you're level seventy, right? And I'm not, so uh, and I'm that's not, why you don't care. That's that's exactly it. I care. I, I have problems with commitment, obviously. I'd rather have them focus their efforts on end game stuff than new stuff. Like it was fun to do, you know, Blood Elf territory and Dry Eye territory just to do it. But do but we really want to do that again? No, no, we don't. No, we don't. Which is why I'm also awesomely excited about the uh, 
way they're doing the Death Knight. Right, the hero class. Like when you unlock the hero class, you start at like what fifty or sixty or seventy. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. I can that that I can, that is all right. But you have to get to eighty first. That's fine. I can deal with that. Or can you? Mm. At some we'll, point, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> it'll be it'll be a, a wow watch for I'm me not as even I at seventy. So. so so basically, the Death Knight is an alt that you don't have to grind up. Exactly. Pretty much. Yeah, that is exactly that's what awesome. it is. That's awesome. Yeah, and that's how they plan on doing all the all the hero classes. Wow, Ryan happen. got it in like five seconds. He understood <laughs> what it has yeah. taken other people weeks, and they still don't get it. <laughs> I salute you. Seriously? This, yeah, this yeah, makes make, up makes... for you not playing Bioshock. <laughs> how, how is that difficult? You can, to it's not difficult. It is, but so, it's it, not. It's so easy. How the hell could you not get that? Seriously. That's a good question. Y- you should have been at BlizzCon. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even in the first demo that we got of the game. Yeah. I hate to say. I'm not going to name names. There was another game journalist in attendance. Oh, name names. No. Well, not we, don't even know. we don't even really know him, and frankly, he wasn't American, which may be part of the Could problem. Could have just been a language barrier. Not, I mean, not because he wasn't American, but he didn't speak English as a native language. So, But there was a little bit of, so explain this again. When my character becomes, hits a certain level, then I become a Death Knight, and they're like, No. <laughs> After you hit a certain level and you do this quest chain, then you will unlock the ability to create a new character that will be called a Death Knight. So I'll be able to use my priest skills then as a Death Knight? (laughs) No, see, because it's a whole new character. It's not your priest. Oh, but... (laughs) And then, like, a half hour would pass, and it would come up again. And it's like, oh, wait, so back to the Death Knight. So are both my characters on the screen at the same time? That was literally it, it, actually a question that, that was asked. That was a question. Did yeah, I control was... both at the same time? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I, I, chalk Very it up. Nice. I chalk it up to language barrier. Uh-huh. Right. So, but, and we said, and you know what? <laughs> this is why your country's so fucked up, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> well. Holy I'm, crap. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Whatever country you're from. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> fill fill in racial epithet right here. Wow. <laughs> okay. So you got uh, it. <laughs> yes. It is so, a is a high level alt. Have they talked about other um other hero classes? They have not. They're gonna they do one said, at a time here. Mm-hmm. You're gonna get it right once, see if it works. They said they fully intend on adding more. That's about all they said. Right. Dang. And they can do that like not in a actual expansion right I, I don't the, know if they the, the thing that you know people were saying like oh great so there's going to be 80 million death knights running around that not little, not really i think there will be a lot of them when they you know that's what happens for a short amount of time yeah right. but then but it'll, then it'll, it'll, it'll filter settle. out people aren't gonna like it i'll right. I mean, you know i know i'm gonna try it right so. well we all will we all try dual crafting there will be 80 million people playing death knights because death knight is one of those like cool sounding things that all the little kids will want to play like, like you. It's like when, when they introduced the assassins into Guild Wars. Everybody wanted to be an assassin because assassins are badass. And now how is it? Is it now? Is everybody an assassin now? No. Right. Of course not. It's just, it'll naturally even itself out. Everybody learned to assassin. I, I went PV. back to Guild Wars. That's the other thing I've been playing. Cool. I'm playing the Nightfall campaign. You're busy. I cannot get over the hump uh, of this game. I can't. I cannot fully get on board. I don't know what my problem Nightfall is. Nightfall is, is I the respect best one. It. I do respect this game. Are you soloing? Or are you actually partnering up with people? Or? I haven't played with other humans. I, I tend not to like other humans. And that's the problem. <laughs> when, you, when you get going and you, you unlock um, some of the hero characters, you'll, yeah. you'll start to have a lot more fun. Those really those make the game way, way better. Yeah. Yeah. They make it feel sort of like a single-player RPG in a way. Hmm. And that... You know, Which is a great thing cool. for an MMO. Well, it's but it's this it's not so an MMO. Weird. I know. This I mean, is like I mean, halfway yeah. between. You know? Yeah, I know. Are, are the I like it too. Are the the groups? Are the people? Is the player community cool? Would how do you mean cool? <laughs> well, <laughs> you are, know, they are they tools? people you'd want to like you know, hang with uh, you know at at a Radiohead concert and, and smoke a joint with. No, I didn't mean that what? at all. Uh, I just <laughs> meant which, I don't know why I said that. Which group of players? I don't know that I'm I don't know, like to do that with. I, <laughs> nobody. I don't even know why I said that. I'm free associating because I'm tired. I, I, I mean, it's are they like, could you, can you go into like the general area and say, you know, LFG for whatever and get three people who are going to be cool and not be dicks? Well, and, are you and a play? monk? Are you a healer? I, no, <laughs> I'm so, a necromancer. If so, Yes, you can get a group anywhere. Oh, if so not, you have to be a warrior or a healer, just like every other game. Well, <laughs> That's how I it mean, works. I mean, you know, 
Okay. Everybody wants. But do people? But uh, my question is, do people right. play well? Do people play. I'm assuming there's some that do and some that it's, don't. It's, it's kind of like, like you know, it's kind of like wow. There's some jerks and there's some. Mm-hmm. And you can trick us weeding them out. Find a guild that's not a bunch of idiots and you're good. Oh, I guess uh, there probably would be guilds, wouldn't there? In yes, guild wars, yes. <laughs> perhaps Sometimes they're perhaps they're Sometimes having some they sort of skirmish. Let me draw you a map. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing the point of this game. <laughs> so you're a necromancer? Yes. Necromancers get badass. What's your uh, alt? My alt profession? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, honestly, I'm just like one level below that because oh, okay. I just restarted. That's you can change that later. So that doesn't. That's not like a permanent. Commitment. Okay. They don't have a very good uh, uh, name filter in this game either, I've noticed. Mm, yeah, there's some people with some pretty retarded names. Yeah, I was, my first two characters, they're all still there. Just kind of weird all these years later. They're still living on the server. Yeah, they don't erase. Neglected and forlorn, but but there was I'm a loser, and uh, I'm, these are, that's first, last name. I'm a loser, and mm-hmm. I'm a moron. And my guy today, who I created this morning, was I'm a retard. So, but they, they were fine. They're fine with that. Yes, I'm 45, and I. That's like, did you ever uh, read any of those old Ultima Online comics from I'm a newbie? No. He, he's a very famous Ultima Online personality. Okay, yeah. I always spelled it like retard was R E H T A R D E. I'm <laughs> cleverly, cleverly trying to avoid any filter crackdown. Because I'm smart that way. Yeah, you are. <laughs> well, you dodge the police on that one. Yeah. And Guild Wars, it, it's great. Like, you'll go into certain specific zones, and you'll see just, like, dozens and dozens of monks slash mesmers or whatever the popular class is with just, like, garbage names, like, obvious mm-hmm. bots. But there'll be, like, dozens Uh-oh. and dozens of them, like, all standing in the same place and going through the same, like, script. Bots? Yeah. Like, farmer, gold farmer bots. Gold farmer bots. Guild Wars, Guild, Wars? Has, Guild Wars has kind of a problem with those, yeah. Wow. Well, we're putting Darren to sleep over there. <sighs> Whoa. I'm a Motok boring. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are the other crucial topics that we've been holding out on? Well, let me see. Is it worth talking about all the stuff from QuakeCon? Because I mean, it's kind of like weeks old at this point. Ta- tell us tell about me about it. Other than the guys I wasn't with there, the porn. so I can't. Okay, other than, other than guys with porn. Tell, um, us the, tell us the exciting id news. Well, let me see. Uh, there's a couple of b- bits of news. <coughs> the first, first one being the um, the actual engine itself, the id Tech Five. The demo they had, basically, they had they had the same textures, the same assets, and they had the game running on a uh, Mac, a PC, an Xbox 360, and a PS3. All at the same. All time? at the same time. All the same code. So basically, wow. well, yeah, I know. The, 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 is that a, like is that bad news for PC gamers, or does it not matter? Well, actually, <coughs> well, actually, the. the the interesting part is that you know it's good. It's it's actually good news because it it, op- it makes the if it's if it's as simple as like flicking a switch and saying okay let's make the game available on these platforms, it it reduces uh, costs, development mm-hmm. time, you know, and we get more games. That, mm-hmm. that, that's only a good thing. I see it. The only thing is, the engine doesn't use DX10, so it's not going to look as pretty as like say Crisis or something. That's Could, a weird. Why would they do that? That is weird. Well, I, you know that that was a conscious a conscious decision of uh, Carmax for a while. It's like he he was never sold on what DX10 can do, and I've. So he's talked to us about that in the past in the magazine. Say, he's been on record saying multiple places that he's, he, he doesn't really see the big deal with DX10 right Isn't now. Isn't that a bit of a smack to Microsoft? It yeah, absolutely is. <clears throat> but then again, if you take a look at the uh, the demo that's out there for Rage, the, their first game showing off the engine, mm-hmm. it looks, pre- looks kind of cool, but at the same point, it doesn't look like, holy crap, this is mm-hmm. Crisis. Is it brown? <laughs> well, their their games tend to be brown. Well, actually, this is all. This is actually a, a lot of outdoor stuff here. Rage. Okay. So yeah, is it brown outdoors. <laughs> it's, brown. <laughs> it's like the, like uh, canyons walk, and it's like, right, like it's like walking, Montana, or like walking through a cesspool. No, actually, no, actually, it was, it was, it's all right. It's like what they showed right now. They're saying the game is going to be like a fifty percent uh, running gun, you know, you know, action mm-hmm. game first person shooter and then it's also gonna have racing out you know driving elements so you can hop in and out of car whenever you need to the, the video that they put up there makes it a lot of people thought it was like eh, just motor storm meet with an fps but mm-hmm. i think they, they sold themselves short in that video uh let me see the other big news uh steam Ah, uh, yeah the big announcement was like they're so they're selling all their old games on steam which uh, they're there now aren't they yeah that's right they yeah. have uh, the id complete pack or something like that or is id super pack where it has every game from Doom 3 Resur- Re- Resurrection of Evil back to, like, Commander Keen pack, which mm-hmm. I was also playing this weekend. 
Mm -hmm. now, these are games, awesome. Were these games mm -hmm. not available in retail, like those really old ones anymore? Well, you can like buy, you, you can either get them off eBay, some of them, or, yeah. you, or, you, or you could get them like, like, some of them are being offered on, on the uh, id site, but. Yeah, having them one click away on Valve, on uh, Steam is pretty sweet. Yeah, it, it, and it works pretty well too. I mean, I, play, I played a couple of games, I'm probably going to check out Return to Castle Wolfenstein again mm -hmm. in a couple of days, just to, mm -hmm. just getting myself ready for uh, Quake Wars. Do, they, they, have, do they have Wolf 3D on there? Yeah, they have it all. Oh. Everything's there. And you know, they need to get all the old um, Apogee games. That would there. be cool. Rise of the Triad? There's, the, there's like all the oh, original man. Duke Nukem games yeah. and like Crystal Caves yeah. and all the that Steam stuff. The Steam library is getting pretty uh, pretty sweet there. They got now. some great stuff there. Yeah. And oh, um, one, other, like, one other bit of news from the show, speaking of Steam, uh, Valve. Uh, they had uh, a booth there. Uh, Valve had a booth there showing off Left 4 Dead. Actually, it was a uh, playable demos, and it was kind of funny. Like you hear it, like they have all these games being demoed. Uh, there's there's an Activision booth. There's all this other stuff going on. And uh, it, as soon as they let down the ropes to let people in for the uh, the booth part of the show, mm -hmm. everyone ran and, and like ran toward the left uh, for dead. Let the Left 4 Dead booth, That's and like awesome. they, they were they were hmm. lined up around to play that thing. It was wow. awesome. That game looks so rad. It it really is. I I I I played like I went play. I played for one mission, and I was about to get back and like go in line or something just to play it again. It was really it, cool. It seems like this is a bit of a sleeper, sort of, or not a sleeper, but just sort of. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah, it? right. I don't know if they were necessarily expecting it to be mm -hmm. that big a deal, and then everyone's like, "Oh, zombies! I want to play zombies!" Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they they didn't finish the UI for the zombies, so I couldn't play as the zombies. But I was watching guys from uh, Turtle Rock, a uh, developer, work. You know, uh, playing as the zombies. Right. There's some really cool stuff they could do. So like let's say you're playing as uh, I think the boomer is one of them this big fat bloated guy. He can, oh like, right. He yeah. can vomit blood and like when you <laughs> you vomit blood you blind somebody for a couple seconds and then you run into the midst mm -hmm. of them and you blow up. And Plus I think the, the, vo the vomit also attracts the swarms of exactly the, uh, yeah other totally. zombies. It sounds too. like kind of Quake cool. con attendees themselves. <laughs> and they modeled it after their own. Yeah. <laughs> you, you got you the AI from their last conference. You, you, feed, <laughs> you, you feed them one more chicken wing and then they just. <laughs> 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 And no. these are and these are fast zombies, not slow zombies. Oh, the yeah. fast zombies. It's definitely twenty eight yeah. days later zombies. But, but but the game was I mean it, it just it it has those like like think like in Counter Strike where they have objectives, but instead of having like some kind of you know uh, map or some kind of like directions like okay you have to go here, it was very, it was all very contextual. You knew where you had to go, and your characters actually communicate with each other. So like let's say I'm reloading, your in game it says oh you're like I'm reloading. It communicates that to your other players. Or if you see, um, if you see that subway up ahead, it goes, "Oh, that's the subway. We should go. You know, that that's safe." Or like, mm -hmm. it kind of like as you're playing, it's kind of like the the mm -hmm. game itself is giving you cues as to where to go, uh, kind mm -hmm. of logically, without mm -hmm. kind of pulling you out of the game for mm -hmm. a second. It's, it's super co-op driven, yeah. It's for sure. exactly. Yeah. It's it's kind of hard to explain until you yeah. actually play it. But the thing is, like, you know, like the g without a map, an overhead map, or anything that kind of pulls you out of the experience, it's telling you, it's giving you all the cues you need onto where you need to go. And it's mm -hmm. very naturally, almost like you're watching a movie or something. Right. This is coming out after T Team Fortress 2. Yeah, I think it's like yeah. I think it's talking Q1 right now. Uh -huh. And I I got to tell you man, I was I was ready to go back and play some more and it was hmm. it was getting the most attention during the show for sure. What do you think about I mean Rage as a game or was it too early to tell? It's was too it early. just more of a tech demo? It was more of a tech demo but yeah. the, you know but the the tech looks really cool. I mean mm -hmm. like the fact is it's it's ease of use. That's what kind of impressed me. Um, but the but as name, far as, the as name far as, is so dull to me. Yeah, the game really. Well, like, Doom, rage. Quake, Rage. Yeah, it's it's part uh, of the yeah the four letter or five if you're mm -hmm. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Prey, uh -huh. shooter. <laughs> right, but but the but the but the general idea was like it's um. Uh, I just totally lost it for a second. The general idea is that it's just supposed to be like um. I think like kind of Fallout-ish, kind of post-apocalyptic, mm. uh, dealing with the fallout of the world, and it's they they've consciously said they want to make sure that it's not just like this running around in dark corridors kind of game because they don't want to make another one of those. So it's outdoors, open. You can go in and out door. You can run into caves if you want. There's a lot of stuff that's gonna happen. Caves! Holy cow! <laughs> <laughs> that's not up. indoors. You should have called well, it cave. Well, <laughs> whatever. Cave. Son of a cool. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds, so it sounds pretty damn early then. No, it, 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 they really didn't have much to say. It's just kind of like a teaser at this point. They, they have, I mean, really the truth is they've kind of morphed away from being a company that we actually expect games out of as more like a tech company in a way. I know, but, know? It, but it's kind of funny. Like yeah. every, every one of their past games, though, everyone's all like, 
oh my god, this, the, the, the new hotness, the new tech, and like they usually turn to like an id for like the oh my god graphics. Mm -hmm. And here this time, people are just kind of like still kind of like holding up to crisis and going, well, it looks pretty good. But I think, yeah. But the impressive, but I think the, the cool part is like you can have a, a lot of de te texture detail that kind of loads in on the fly. And that, that's kind of the the whole point of this game is that theoretically, if it works the way they're talking, there'll be no loading levels, or at least like once the level loads, it's kind of like the textures are loaded in as you're playing. So it like, like for example, you walk up to a wall and it'll look like not grayed out, but it'll a lot more detail will naturally appear as you get closer. Mm -hmm. So you can, I mean, it depends on how much time the artist want to take on it. I don't know how much time yeah. I want to spend in my games walking up to walls. Yeah, that's yeah, that's I kind know. Of stuff I know. That, as soon as they start talking about how that's working, I'm like, eh, whatever. Well, think, <laughs> okay. Well, think of a game like Quake Wars. Quake, Thinking. Quake, Quake Wars mm -hmm. uses the first generation of that kind of tech, mm -hmm. and this is kind of like an evolution of that. Mm -hmm. Plus, it also works for multiple platforms. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. That's well, that, cool. yeah, it's the multi-platform scalability thing that'll be exactly, and, mm -hmm. and like you know, I mean, it'll mean I th to me it'll mean a lot more console-y games coming to PC than like PC games going to console. That's what I would imagine be the natural fall to this, like kind of like Strangle. Keep calling it Stranglethorn. <laughs> Stranglehold. You gotta, you gotta wow, wow Get out of Wow, man. John yeah. Wow's Stranglethorn. <laughs> <laughs> Doves in Wow next. Uh, I lost what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like the reason that probably uses dual core is probably because you know it's a console game and they're like, yeah, what could we do to get it on PC? Oh, we need a dual core. Okay, that's fine. And this, you know, right. That's what it needs. They're not going to try right. to yeah, they're not gonna scale try to it down. So yeah. la lazy PC programming, if for the sake of uh, multiplayer. Develop once, publish twice, three times, four times. Yeah. Whatever. Sell, sell. Yeah. Which is cool. Or At least not. get options. Like yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's cool. I don't know if it's cool. Ryan Stuff is cool. cool. We're cool. Sorry. <laughs> Games are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, well, going going back to to uh, Steam. I don't think we've talked about this, but the, yeah, the Steam was... community. Yeah, that was the segue. Uh, yeah, go for it, man. Mm. Steam community. Have we all downloaded it now? Yes, I did. Yep. Uh, I have not yet. You have not yet. No. For listeners who don't know yet, uh, Valve right now is running a beta program uh, through Steam. And Steam itself, of course, is a free download. And I believe beta uh, participation in this beta is totally open. So you could check this out yourself now for absolutely not even one penny. Uh, just download. Am I? You're looking at me funny. Is that right, uh, Darren? No, no, that's absolutely right, actually. Okay. I, I was just, like, thinking to myself, how was it you could get to it? I think it's like you go into the settings panel, and then you yeah. check off yeah, there's uh, a participation, settings, in, the beta, participation in the beta program. Participation in the beta program. It's just a pull-down menu. And you could check this thing out. And basically, if you do check it out, this this free beta, uh, you're going to see uh, Games for Windows <laughs> live, basically, in yeah. action for nothing. It's a big old <laughs> FU to Microsoft right now. Yeah. To if, if it amounts to. It's pretty sweet. I mean, I don't know. You know what's pretty cool, actually, is that... <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It's, you know, it's we've, we've harshed on, on Games for Windows live before, and... You know, we've said pretty harsh things in the magazine on this podcast, and I kind of have wanted to back off from that and let Microsoft do its thing. But now you've got Valve coming out here and do a beta that's like every single thing that it seems to me that Games for Windows promised it was going to do, and here's Valve doing it for free. That's right. I, I saw I saw Ryan like was telling me that you were on like last week playing Geometry Wars, and, and it was telling me it was it was working exactly how live. Should work. Or you, get, will work. you got your buddy list right there. Mm -hmm. it, it, there's a very absolutely simple and very nicely intimated uh, shift tab uh, mechanic there, which will bring up uh, your Steam community interface and your buddy list. You can add, it's, this isn't just about Valve games either, which was a nice little mm -hmm. mini piece of ingeniousness, but you can add non Steam games on there. So if I'm playing World of Warcraft or whatever it is, Guild Wars, all my buddies in the Steam community can see that I'm doing that. Actually, it, was, it wasn't letting me do that. I, 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 lo I loaded in, like, Stalker and a bunch of other games. Uh -huh. It just, whenever I was in a game which it, that wasn't a part of Steam, it just said in-game. I think it's just a matter of, like, you have to load in the information for Stalker. Well, or? yeah, maybe this is part of the beta. I mean, right. I, I added those games in, the non-Steam games, and they showed up in my own list on my PC. 
as right. non Steam games, but I don't. But you're right. I haven't seen it work with anybody else's machine yet. Right. So, no, so. You, you can there, put the overlay on it. You can put the and overlay on stuff. though. Yep. Yeah. I was playing WoW and I could shift tab and my Steam list came up. Oh yeah, that, no that, problem. Oh, that totally works. I mean, the only mm -hmm. thing I was saying was like, for example, like I was playing Stalker and people could say that could see that I was in game, but they couldn't. But they tell. couldn't see that it was right. Whereas like you, when I was playing Psychonauts last week, which I downloaded from Steam, mm -hmm. you could tell that I was playing Psychonauts. Right. Right. Yeah. But are there? But Steam I couldn't tell if you were sucking it or Bell There are not Steam achievements. Oh, <laughs> not man. yet. I gotta tell you, I'm not a big fan of Steam or any achievements. No, I don't really. I don't give a crap. I, <laughs> you know what? It's funny is that I, I have been. A, I wouldn't go so far as to say an achievement whore. Maybe an achievement, uh, you know, street walker. <laughs> no, that's not right. I don't know what the right metaphor is. An I, escort, I, perhaps. I like it. Yes. Okay. I like getting the achievements, but. I don't make a big deal out of it, but I did think that that was going to be cool in GFW Live, mm -hmm. that I'd be able to get them on my PC, but I haven't even thought about that running from a Steam thing. I don't miss not getting them. I guess, yeah, the thing is, like, I play some games, but I, I don't play them to completion, so I don't get all the achievements, or I just miss some points. So I see some of my... Is, is that turning into a pressure thing, where I see my friends with their huge achievement score, you know, achievement point scores, and I have a couple... I have, like, you know, six, 7,000. And I feel like it's just an underachiever. I'm like, crap. This, like, I feel like an underachiever all yeah. day. I need, I need this from when I play games, too. <laughs> so you don't need the reminder. <laughs> You're right. I, they, you know, to me, this is just like a big, like, you know, <laughs> okay, they've now proven it can be done on, you know, on our XP machines pretty seamlessly without charging anything. And it's really kind of begging the question here as to what Microsoft is well, this is going to bring to the good. party this here. This will inspire Microsoft to to create competition for it. Competition's a good thing. I mm -hmm. sure hope so. I sure hope it does inspire. Why, yeah, this is why competition exists. Right, and Microsoft usually squashes competition, but <laughs> let's we'll see how they handle this. Let's see how they handle this. It'll be interesting to see. Yeah, I would like them to see like on the. I don't, I don't know how they would do this, but on the, the your buddy list, mm -hmm. it would be cool if they they integrated like aim usage or something into well, there is. chat. Well, you can you can messenger. Well, but you I mean, know aim I mean itself. like you mean, aim. You mean actually integrate like messenger or something like that? Oh. Right. So I could like see my aim buddies from that. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's the next step. I don't know if that's part of it. Yeah. Cuz like there's no way you're going to like steal all of aim's mind share. Well, no, no of course not. not. You know. I, and I wish it was just like integrated. Well, actually, they work with, I wish they worked with somebody like Trillium to just kind of get everything as a portal, you know, port it in. That would be, that'd that'd be pretty be rad. Cool. Yeah, that, that'd be awesome. Mm -hmm. It makes perfect sense. Yeah, so so cool so far. And uh, and it's free. And it's Can't free, yeah. If, if you have the, the time, I would go check it out. You don't even have to download any Steam games, you know, to do it, just to have that interface. Just check that out. So, so like, how far along is beta, have they really said? I didn't really say it, I think. It, like, <coughs> it hasn't been up for that long. So. Have you noticed anything beta-like about it, or is it just totally says... Well, I mean, when you open your overlay on um, on some games, like it, it'll noticeably lag. Yeah, it's a little... It's rough anything. around the edges, for sure. This is not... You know, you can't go download it now and think, oh, my God, this is the greatest thing ever. It's a, it's a beta, you know? So things aren't always going to work that well. I think that the interface needs a little... Um, <clears throat> needs a little polish... I've never been a big fan of Steam, kind of like that sort of, you know, pea soup green color they've got. It could be a you lot more. You can change that. Can you? Well, I, this might be a new feature of the yeah. Yeah, uh, I don't know. beta, but there's different can themes that it? you can pick from. Okay. Yeah. Can, you can you turn it to Freeman Orange? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that'd, probably be a, that'd probably nice. be a good one. <laughs> That's the color of my bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> can you do the theme song? To my bedroom? <laughs> no, 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 no. To Half-Life 2. To Half-Life 2, I meant. I don't want to know that. That's Yeah, you know, I don't that's, want that theme that's song. too much information. <laughs> yeah. Don't go there. Please. Uh, yeah. All right. I think we're going to wrap this week up. Uh, before we huh? do, one yep. thing. I felt really bad uh, we didn't get a chance to... Actually, we all felt bad we didn't get a chance to do the podcast last week. I don't yes, feel sir. bad. Uh, I except except for Ryan bad, yeah. and except for Sean. Okay, in other words, screw you all. Uh, yeah, I didn't feel bad either, Dan. All right, screw it. Well, Darren that, feels bad, so. In that case, I Darren felt, felt bad for you. That's right, because I care, damn it. he cares. And I also yeah. happen to have an extra MP3 player in the office. So I'm going to be giving one away this uh, this week with all our pod with uh, the past two months of podcasts on it. 
God. It's like a booby prize. And you can't delete them. And, you you get the <laughs> and they're locked. <laughs> and there's no room for anything else. <laughs> Except for a picture of Ryan. So this Giant is, pictures of uh, us, too. <laughs> so this is not uh, an, a, an iPod, correct? This, this is not an, not iPod. an this Apple is, brand. This is it. Oh, f- fuck iPod. Uh, this is the. Well, uh, hey, <laughs> I agree. Thank you. No, this is the uh, this is the Zen Stone. It's a it's a one gigabyte MP3 player. Nothing nothing too big, nothing too fancy. Okay. But, but it's it, free. But it's free, and it also comes with a little sound, a little with little speakers you can plug into it. So oh, that's nice. External so, speakers. That's right. So you can basically you know pretend pick, pick. like you ha- you that's can pre- cool. you can you can like let everyone on the bus listen to uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> the, the podcast. It's like a nerd boombox. <laughs> No. So wait, do we have a? <laughs> no, are we having a that. contest for this thing? Well, that's the thing. I'm trying to figure out. Like, I was hoping you guys could help me out. I didn't get a chance to sit down and think about this. Live on the air. Live on the air contest. contest. We're supposed to figure these things out before we go on. All right. That's how it. one up yours would have done it. Oh, uh, that's right. They're, well, they're a little they would have. You know. How about? Uh, uh, I'm thinking of a number. Yeah. All right. Forget <laughs> it. You know what? <laughs> Kill this part of it. We'll just be, I'll give no, away. No, no, no. No, we're gonna. We're. This is live we're radio. We're just having fun. We're not. All right. Okay. By the time that this. By the time you hear this, my words now, there will be a thread on our boards ah. about this free MP3 player. Perhaps we'll even put this in our GFW Radio blog. Maybe we will. Mayhaps. Mayhaps we won't. And there will <laughs> <No> be promises. <laughs> and there will be a contest, or not, for this MP3 player. Or it might be just okay. something as lazy as the first one to PM me will uh, get it. <laughs> Maybe that's all it'll be. <laughs> Okay. Or maybe we'll forget to do any of that stuff by the time this goes out. Because because we're right. kind of and that MP3 dread. player will sit in the same pile with my heroes five tarot cards. <laughs> I have one of you my. still have those. One yeah. of my friends. Yeah. We've had that contest before I started. By I the know. Way. <laughs> <laughs> one one of my friends who is probably listening to this podcast was yeah. one of the the lucky winners of one of those tarot decks. <laughs> fixed. And he harasses totally me fixed. regularly about like when the hell is Jeff going to send? What's his name? His name is Ryan Coyne. Ryan, Ryan Coyne, if you're listening, uh, I'm getting to it. <laughs> <laughs> what is and it? I suggest that you probably keep just bothering Ryan about it here. So, so it's been like what? Like keep a sending year? him emails and aims. It's been like a year. <laughs> yeah, Heroes 5, nobody even, everyone's already uninstalled Heroes 5. We'll see just how continue how. to use your existing tarot cards. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. Don't substitute for the Heroes 5. It'll, it'll be ready in time for Heroes 6. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, well, we'll be back with uh, more nonsense next week. Uh, are we the full crew next week? Uh, Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who cares? We'll be back in a week. Can't wait to talk to you again. Signing off. Bye. I can wait.